Good morning to you from Deadwood, South Dakota. Mark Suttoth here, HurricaneTrack.com. Can't believe I'm saying that. Deadwood, South Dakota. Why am I here? We'll talk about that at the end of the update. But first, do we have our first name storm brewing? It is possible. We have an area of interest out there as the hurricane season is now starting to show itself. And uh, we'll talk about that. I'll give you the details on what I know and what we don't know. And then I'll take a look again, kind of explaining for those of you that don't know, why would he be in Deadwood, South Dakota? What is he on vacation? Nope, I'm working. And I'll show you the um, the results of that work as we wrap things up on today's update. All right, thanks for joining me. Let's get started. First, appropriate tw- tweet here from uh, Dylan Federico. He's over in Dallas at the Fox 4 station there. But he's a hurricane guy, tracking hurricanes his entire life. And he's right. We've got Invest Area 90L in the Gulf of Mexico. So real quick, let's bring me back on. What is a 90L? For those of you that are new to this whole hurricane thing, maybe you've always wondered, what does that mean when they say invest 90L? Well, when an area of interest like this pops up, instead of just calling everything an area of interest or a blob of clouds or whatever, National Hurricane Center has come up with, and I guess it's an agreement throughout the world, uh, you know, the World Meteorological Organization, because they do the same thing globally, and that is numbers 90 through 99 invest, like an area of investigation, and uh, then the letter L is for Atlantic, the L part of Atlantic, but it's actually AL90 technically. We just call it 90L for short. So the Eastern Pacific would be EP90, and we would just call it 90E, and the Westpac would get a W, and so forth and so on. Understand? So there are areas of interest, 90 through 99 is the numbering system, and then they start over again. It's just a way to keep up with with what's what before they get names like what we have on our paper tracking map, if you have one of those, for example. So yeah, that's why it's called 90L. It's an area of interest or investigation. So it's forecast to cross Florida, this system, into the Atlantic where it does have a chance of becoming a tropical storm. Either way, a lot of rain is already falling and more is coming for portions of the Florida Peninsula. So this is what it looks like over on the National Hurricane Center site. First yellow X of the year, one of many that is probably coming. We knew it was going to happen, well, as much as we can know, right? We were suspecting it would happen, uh, and here we are. So this is the 48-hour. This is the seven-day. It looks like our system's going to, again, cross Florida, get into the southwest Atlantic, where it does have a chance to develop into the first name storm, which this year is Alberto. So this is what it looks like on a broad satellite picture. If we zoom in on it, really, you can tell there's a lot of energy down here. But you can also see upper-level winds are not ideal right now. Uh, I'll show you on some charts in just a minute from the GFS why this isn't in an ideal location. But there is a lot of deep thunderstorm activity. There is some vorticity or spin down here. Um, Some of the ingredients are in place. That's the bottom line. But not all. And they're not all ideal. Water temperatures are certainly warm enough through this area in the offshore waters, that's for sure. And so with that, you have very high precipitable water in the atmosphere. And that means a lot of available moisture to ring out. And anywhere that you see these deeper cloud, and I can tell they're deep even on this satellite imagery, which is a visible shot, you can just tell that is some pretty heavy rain falling across the region. So if you are in Florida, you're going to Florida for vacation or business or whatever, especially the southern part of the peninsula down there, basically the I-75 corridor and points east, give or take 50 to 100 miles. Um, you you got some big cities, Naples, and then over on the east side, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, down to Miami and all that metro area, millions of people, lots of folks out there, urban areas. And what's that going to mean? Heavy rain with traffic issues, flight delays, prepare for it now, cruise ship interruptions perhaps. And speaking of that, my next Hurricane U episode, our educational series, where we dig deeper into different topics related to hurricanes, will be with Royal Caribbean's meteorologist Craig Setzer. I'll have that ready hopefully in a few days. Perfect timing, right? So just be patient if you're getting going down to the Sunshine State not so sunshiny for the rest of this week. So this is what it looks like on the vorticity signature. And there you go. That's the little maximum right down there, or maxima, whatever you want to call it. 
starting to show up there. It's just a little piece of energy, but it is there. It's over very, very warm water, and I can show you that. I mean, this is ridiculous. Some of these water temperatures here, 30 Celsius already, so that is, you know, in the upper 80s, 85, 86 degrees, and even warmer the closer to Florida you get. This will actually start to knock these temps down a little bit, just the disturbed area of weather being there. So that might be a little beneficial later on, but it's only June. And once this moves out, those water temperatures will rebound. But watch over the coming days as we look at this map. Yeah, maybe on Thursday or Friday or something, I'll show it to you again. And these 30 degrees Celsius areas, that isotherm there will be kind of knocked down. All right, uh, the broader scale, though, this is really interesting uh, in terms of our system, and also extremely concerning. Uh, for those of you that have you know, been with my channel for the many years that I've been doing this, I definitely try not to scream from the mountaintop, put scary headlines up or anything like that. You let the weather hype itself. You get a Katrina, you get an Ian, you get a Charlie, you understand the situation. You get a Florence where you're going to have a flood threat that is catastrophic, or a Harvey situation where you both had the very scary Category 4 landfall and the catastrophic flooding in Houston, that's where you sound the alarms. Not often do I sound the alarms early because I don't know the outcomes of things. But when I see something like this, these anomalies, these are departures from normal. Normally I show you the big map. This is a zoomed in portion of that big map. And just look at this. The western part of the MDR over here, or at least the deep tropical Atlantic, into the Caribbean and the Gulf, Everything is well above average. That is the signature that we normally see when we associate what does the water temperature profile look like when we have very busy hurricane seasons. Everything is above average in the tropics down here. And then the water temperatures north of there are a little bit cooler to right where they should be. So the most energy is going to be focused through here. It's just a natural progression of things. At least that's what we anticipate. So how does that relate to our system over here? It has ample energy to work with in terms of upper ocean heat content, and those water temperatures are warmer than normal by a pretty good stretch. It will be interesting, though, once we get this system out here to see what this does in the coming days to the anomalies map as well. We'll check this, which are actual temperatures, and we'll check this again probably Friday morning and just see how things have changed. All right, so what does the model uh, situation show? Um, this is sort of, literally it says here, this is the average precip rate uh, in millimeters per hour. So if we just kind of look at this, it gives us an idea of how much rain is just going to stream over Florida. And then the GFS tries to close off a little bit of a low pressure there to the southeast of Wilmington, off the southeast coast, just as a general geographic area. But notice just copious amounts of rain all through this region, uh, and that won't go away anytime soon because we've got this gyre set up down there, that monsoonal gyre, so to speak, or the Central American gyre, kind of like a monsoon change. But look, you can clearly see how these wind barbs come around here in this gyre, you know, and, and it's just stuck down there for now. Uh, this is the impulse that would move across Florida. This is 78 hours out, and then it kind of lingers out over the western Atlantic for a few days, and yeah, doesn't do too much. But you notice that the pattern stays unsettled across the Gulf of Mexico. And with the water temperatures so warm relative to average, it won't be surprising to see more systems try to form like that, that the GFS pops up this coming late weekend, maybe towards Louisiana. So we're going to have to watch pretty much every one of these little Vortmax areas. In other words, these guys right here, anytime we see something like that over the warm water, we're going to have to watch it because it could try to develop. We saw that a lot in 2020. The water temperatures were very warm. They were anomalously warm. And every little thing that had the opportunity to try to develop it did, and that's why we had 30 named storms. Some of these were very short-lived, and they were pretty weak overall, but they were just popping all over the place, given even a relatively small geographic area of favorability in the atmosphere. So the Euro kind of shows the same thing. This is, the again, the same area of the atmosphere, 5,000 feet up, or 850 millibars, uh, a lot of moisture, and then that system does consolidate somewhat 
off the southeast coast, as you can see there. Nothing significant, nothing, and that's what you'd expect, by the way, in June. It's hard to get a June hurricane, but we're not worried just about hurricanes. I'm going to use this greenish color. All of this tells me moisture, rainfall. And like I just told you, rainfall over South Florida, where all the people are, that's going to be a big problem. Traffic accidents, flight delays, like I said, cruise problems, perhaps. Yeah, it's going to be a mess and potentially even some localized flooding. This is what it looks like on the humidity side of things, the relative humidity. And again, just a lot of moisture down there. This is all from the Euro, by the way. So copious amounts of moisture. But then you notice as the system gets up here off the southeast coast, there's more dry air involved. That should help to stunt the growth of it into anything substantial, but a lot of energy and a lot of moisture out there to be sure. Looking out ahead, I wanted to show you this because we're going to get an update from Colorado State University just about the time that I wrap this video up. It's actually probably already out. And one of the big things is, again, those sea surface temperature anomalies, and that very warm water helps to lower the mean sea level pressure. And so I wanted to show you the Euro out the next 10 days and this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly, and that word anomaly means departure from something, right? So the blues and the darker the gradient of the blues would indicate lower than normal pressures. And conversely, the denser colors of red over here, a uh, higher pressure anomaly, all right? So let's just look over the next 10 days, shall we? What do you notice? Down in the deep tropics, everything is basically blue, 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 blue. And that is very concerning because that means the trade winds are not screaming across this area. And once this gets into the more climatologically favored part of maybe late July into August and beyond, when the tropical waves are vigorous and we have potentially a Madden Julian oscillation standing wave sitting over, that's basically a very favorable upper level pattern over the Atlantic, those lower than normal sea level pressures, this just gets out the next 10 days but it's June. Normally we see pretty high pressure and uh, Saharan air layer outbreaks, and we are getting those, but the normal sea level pressure is lower than it should be, and that's from the Euro. Everybody that says, oh, I just, I'll just follow the Euro. It's King. All right, well, King Euro says, yes, the background state is very favorable for the rest of the hurricane season. Just something to think about. All right, so why, why am I in Deadwood? Well, yesterday... This is a hail core with a little bit of rotation in there. I just noticed that. Nice to see it later. And uh, this is Highway 85 right here that comes up out of Lusk. And then uh, I think it's called Redbird or something like that. It's way up here. Very small towns there in Wyoming and not a lot in between these areas. And that's a hail core that I was able to get into and finally get a lot of hail. It wasn't big hail, but it was a lot of it. That is the thunderstorm that did the hail right there. And I'm um, traveling north of Lusk. This is off of our Patreon site. I'm going to kind of scroll through and show you how things evolved. Uh, I got under the storm. There was a little bit of a traffic jam because they were doing some construction uh, on this Highway 85 there, doing some resurfacing or something. And I'll show you that traffic jam here in a second. There it is. So traffic jam was there, and people were trying to go through. You have that, like the flagger that has the one lane deal and they let some people go and then whatever. And then the storm came in and I'm like, oh man, I got to get south. I got to get this way because that right there is the hail core. You can see that greenish blue tint, hopefully in the video here, it records it screen capturing as I do this. And sure enough, I was able to just go ahead and go on. There was no flagger. They, uh, they got in the vehicle and got out of there and uh, I got in the hail. Uh, let's back up a little bit so we can show you. So I just let this run for a second. Um, all kinds of cameras on that go uh, on that Tacoma. Um, a front-facing cam on the hood. We had the rear-facing cam that was actually sitting on the ladder. <laughs> there's the hood cam on the right, and then there's a brush guard cam. That's what you're looking at there. That looks back at me. And I know you're going, okay, that's not very big hail. What's the big deal? No, it wasn't. But watch what happens. The volume of hail really starts to increase. Not the absolute one foot deep stuff. I'm still waiting to see that sometime. But it finally jumps up right here. I get close to this tree. 
and it really starts coming down. I'll just let this play for a second. Yeah, so there's some marbles and grapes in there, maybe a couple of quarters. Now it starts to come down fast and furious from the, as my friend Greg Nordstrom says, nerd hail. Looks like that candy nerds to very well-rounded uh, marbles, quarters, a few ping pongs in there, maybe a golf ball or two. But look at that. That's what I've been really looking for. There's that core again. I've been wanting to see something like this for a long time. The vehicle is well-equipped for it. Almost a full vehicle hail guard, so all the sensitive stuff of the Tacoma is protected. And just a remarkable experience to be able to see this up close and personal uh, in the heart of open Wyoming out there, High Plains Magic. The cattle, they didn't like it, but they have thick hides. It's still unpleasant. I mean, it's got to be hitting your eyes or whatever. This is the rear-facing cam. So just a really, really neat experience. I wanted to show you that. I uh, posted this over on our Patreon. But look, I want to show you one more thing. And this is huge. So if you watch this video all the way to this point, thank you. Now you get a really unique reward. I also had a 360 cam on top. And I want to show you. How do you show 360 on here? Well, I'll show you. So this is what that hail looked like from the 360 cam. Look at that. Isn't that just neat as heck? Now you can really see the hail like you've never seen it before. Isn't that amazing? I think it is. Let's drop the volume down a little bit. I think that's just so cool. Uh, that's a GoPro Max 360 cam. You can see the hail there. These are our quick dam flood bags that I've got on top to capture the hail and give me the contrast so that I can see the hail. Look at that. That's so cool. So yeah, I put some quick dam flood bags up there and uh, they're so heavy that they just stay in this tray that we've got. See, it's a little bit of a an indention right here that the company that made our hail guard, this is about three inches down or two inches, something like that. And so the quick dams being as heavy, heavy as they are, um, they just sit up there and drive 70 miles an hour. They don't blow out because uh, they're so darn heavy. But yeah, look at all that hail. Really unique perspective from a 360 cam. And I'm going to tell you something. If you've got a VR, I'm going to make this video public later today. You can literally search for that right down there. Wyoming Hailstorm and 360. You can do it right now before I make it public. I don't care. I want you to see this in your VR headset. I can't wait to get home and watch it on my MetaQuest 2. I think that's what I've got. And uh, experience it and hear it. I mean, that's going to be amazing. We can just turn. And also, if you don't have a VR system, you can just go to this on your phone and you play it at full screen, hold your phone horizontal, and you can just move around just like this, and it's like you're right there. Uh, if you've never seen 360 video, that's how you can take advantage of that. Some of these are pretty close to golf ball size there, ping pong to golf ball. A really unique experience there, north of Lusk, by about, I don't know, 15 miles or so yesterday. All right? So there you go. That's what's going on in the tropics. Our first name storm, maybe. We'll see. And, of course, you guys already know the new outlook from Colorado State by the time you're seeing this video. And I'm sure everybody is stewing over that. So, look, be ready. Take all this information. Do something about it. Take action as best you can. And uh, we're going to have to face quite a busy hurricane season, it does appear. And the first shot sort of across the bow is coming with Invest Area 90L, bringing a lot of rain for Florida. And then, as I talked about, maybe, just maybe, our first named storm in the southwest Atlantic. We'll have to wait and see. All right, that is it for me for today. Signing off from Deadwood, South Dakota, I'm Mark Suddeth. From all of us at Hurricane Track, thanks for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow from Parker, Colorado.